Blockchain technology has the potential to revolutionize finance and digital payments as we know it. But there's one big problem with this peer-to-peer -peer value transfer system. It's totally public. Everything that you do on chain is 100% visible to everyone else. And if someone were to know your identity of your crypto wallet, they could track pretty much everything that you do. But how can we fix this? Well, in this video, I'm gonna talk about a new solution to hide your crypto wallet and protect your privacy. I'm gonna explain everything you need to know in this video today as a blockchain developer myself who works this technology on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory. And on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below and subscribe. And if you want to see how to take advantage of all the insane opportunity happening in the blockchain space right now, I can show you how to increase your income by becoming a blockchain developer over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's get into this. Let's talk about how to hide your crypto wallet to make your transactions private and ultimately preserve, you know, your privacy on chain when you're using blockchains. So let's talk about the problem and also the solution. Because again, if you have a wallet on the blockchain and someone goes and looks at this wallet on a block explorer, they can see pretty much every single transaction that you do, anybody that you interact with, okay, and ultimately trace what you're doing with your funds on chain. And I know that blockchains are pseudonymous, which basically means like you don't know necessarily who possesses that crypto wallet, but if they're able to link your identity to the crypto wallet itself, they know everything that you're doing. And for most people, they're buying cryptocurrency on centralized exchanges and then, you know, sending it to a crypto wallet. And the exchanges, of course, have your identity information whenever you do this. So what are some solutions to this? Well, you could try sending it to a different wallet, okay, and then transferring funds that way. But it's really easy to trace who funded that wallet and ultimately link it back to you as the original source of funds and the most likely controller of that new wallet. Or you could do what a lot of people do is try to send it to a centralized cryptocurrency exchange and withdraw it to de-link the identity of those two wallets. But, you know, you've got risks where those funds, you know, could get locked on that exchange or they're probably going to know your identity whenever you withdraw it to that other wallet and basically make that not a viable strategy either. Or you could use an app that lets you fund a new wallet, all right, without linking the old wallet without using a centralized custodian. We've seen these types of solutions come up in the past with things like Tornado Cash, okay? Uh, basically, this is a privacy solution built for Ethereum and other EVM-compatible chains, but it has also had its own set of problems associated with it. Number one, you know, this was sanctioned by the U.S. government, and at the time of recording this video, it looks like they are delisting that and uh, said another way that it's getting overturned. Again, this is not legal advice. I'm not saying you got the green light to start using this type of thing. But it's been huge headwinds for the protocol. Okay, so that's problem number one. Problem number two, which really fueled problem number one, is this was often used by hackers to wash funds after attacks. Okay, so basically, you know, DeFi is notorious for hacking. All right, it's a huge problem. We've seen billions and billions and billions of dollars, you know, stolen by exploiting different DeFi protocols. And after these protocols are exploited, oftentimes what the hackers do is they wash the funds through these types of privacy solutions and fund new wallets and then try to make off, you know, with with the stolen money. And that's one of the main reasons that we saw things like Tornado Cash get sanctioned by the US government. So we're saying like, hey, hackers are using this to wash funds. All right. And therefore, we're not going to let anybody use it. But what if you could come up with a privacy protocol that let regular law abiding people uh, preserve their privacy, but dissociate themselves from the bad actors who are stealing money on the blockchain and using these types of things. Well, that's exactly where this project comes in that I want to show you today, which is uh, ZeroX Bose Privacy Pools, all right? So basically enabling on-chain compliant privacy. So what this allows you to do is basically, you know, protect your privacy on-chain by giving you a fresh crypto wallet that's not linked to your identity, but proves that you are not a bad actor in the space, which overcomes that original problem we see something with past solutions. So this is not a sponsored video or anything like that. I just want to tell you about this type of thing and explain how it works, because I talked about this idea on my YouTube channel a couple of years ago, and it's finally coming to light, and I want to share it with you all. So this type of idea was originally proposed by people like Vitaly Buterin, you know, the mastermind behind Ethereum. And a lot of other big thinkers in the space who saw the need for something like this 
um, you know, like Tornado Cash, but recognize the downside of it being used for illicit activity. And that gave birth to this idea behind privacy pools. So let's see how it works. Okay, so basically the idea behind a privacy pool is it's a pool of funds. Basically, it's a smart contract that exists on chain that you can deposit money into and then withdraw on the other side with a brand new crypto wallet, try to de-link those two wallets. Okay, so basically you start off with one wallet, let's you deposit some amount of money, let's say it's 0.1 ETH into a privacy pool, and then you take a different wallet and you go withdraw that uh, same amount of money to the new wallet. And now you have a brand new wallet that's not linked to the old one which you can now do transactions with, okay, that's not necessarily linked back to the original identity that you deposited the original funds with. So how are you able to do that? Because if you deposit, you know, money with one wallet, how are you able to withdraw it with a different wallet, okay, without saying like designating who the recipient's going to be? Because couldn't theoretically anybody just withdraw the funds on the other side if you deposit it into it? Well, that's because it uses something called a zero knowledge proof, okay? So this is a uh, a technique that's used in the blockchain, a cryptographic technique that's basically you can prove that information is true without revealing that information itself. So a really abstract um, analogy essentially is like a Where's Waldo image. So if I gave you a picture of Where's Waldo and said, hey, prove to me that you found Waldo without revealing Waldo's location, what you could do is just show me a picture cut out of Waldo that proves that you found Waldo, but doesn't show me where Waldo was in the picture that I gave you. So a similar type of thing here, you can use this same technique, uh, a zero knowledge proof that proves that you can control the wallet that deposited the funds without revealing the address itself, which would not link that account back to you. So basically you, you can deposit onto one side, and then without designating the withdrawal address, and then you can withdraw the new wallet, just, just prove that you control the original wallet, and that's gonna let you essentially take the money out. Now, an application like this is not gonna be very effective if you're the only one using it, okay? So if you have a smart contract and you deposit money into it, and you're the only person withdrawing on the other side, it's pretty easy to link the identity of the depositor to withdrawer, because if only one person's using it, I don't think I have to explain that anymore. However, this becomes more effective when you have multiple people doing this, okay? So let's say you have, you know, 10 people using the application now. Well, I mean, you could try to decode who the recipients were, you know, based on the information, but this problem becomes exponentially harder whenever you start getting thousands, hundreds of thousands of people depositing into these pools and withdrawing on the other side. It's really hard to link the identity of the depositors to the withdrawers, okay? And that's what makes this become effective. The more people use it, the more effective it is at actually preserving privacy. Now, again, going back to the original point with something like Tornado Cash, this is where we got things into trouble because, you know, a lot of law-abiding people who just want to protect their privacy were depositing into this, but then you started having some of these depositors here and withdrawers actually bet were bad actors who stole money we're depositing large sums in here and withdrawing into multiple different wallets with small amounts of money to try to obfuscate the stolen funds and make off with, you know, the proceeds. So how this comes into play is essentially it lets the depositors prove that they are not a bad actor when they deposit into this and basically dissociate themselves from bad actors to prove that you're a good actor, that you can actually use this and then ultimately preserve your privacy in an honest way. So that goes down to uh, the privacy pools association set provider. So basically this is a powerful compliance technique tool uh, that's designed to enhance the security and the legitimacy of privacy on blockchain. So you can kind of see how it works here. So basically you have all these deposits that go into this um, association set provider. And what it does is it has this proof of dissociation, which basically means that, hey, I'm not a bad actor. I'm able to use this, all right? And then basically it puts all those deposits that are legitimate into this uh, proof of association. And then you're able to deposit in the pool and actually use the protocol. Now, if you're not, if you fail the proof, um, how does that work? Well, essentially you're able to still withdraw your funds back out of the original transaction, back to your original wallet. Some people can say, hey, 
What if I, you know, am wrongfully accused of being a bad actor? Are my funds just locked into this protocol? No, they're not. You can withdraw them back to your original wallet. You just don't get the benefit of being able to withdraw it to a new wallet on the other side. All right, so that's an overview of how this process works. This, you know, new design with uh, privacy pools. Again, I've talked about the design for several years on my channel. After people like Vitalik Buterin started talking about it, and now it's come to fruition with privacy pools. So if you want to try this out, then how can you get started today? When you go to zerexbo.io, all right, you click on launch privacy pools. Uh, of course, you need to connect your crypto wallet to do this. Um, and you've got to do the deposit and then also the withdrawal. Now, several words of warning before you try this. This is new beta software, okay? So every single time that we launch new things in the blockchain like this, um, you got to be careful, all right, because of course this stuff's been audited, but you know, we can't guarantee that this is 100% safe. Again, it's not an endorsement necessarily of this product, it's not a sponsored video or anything like that. It's just a cool thing that's coming to market and I want to let you all know about it. But if you do decide to use this, you obviously have to assume the risk for doing that. So uh, what you do is you connect your wallet, um, you deposit into here. Now, Another word of warning is the attestation period to prove that, you know, you have a legitimate identity that you're going to be able to do the withdrawal can take a while. All right. It could be pretty quick, but it could take up to seven days. So, you know, if you deposit into this, just know that it could be a while before you do withdraw. It's not like bricking your funds forever, but I just want you to be aware of that before you try it. And at the time of recording this video, uh, at the initial launch, the minimum value of deposit is 0.1 ETH. And the maximum amount that you can deposit per transaction at this point is one ETH. All right, so that's an overview of this new technique to hide your crypto wallet to preserve your privacy on chain that's launched in a decentralized way with this new tool, Privacy Pools, put out by Xerox Bow. Okay. So again, this is something I'm pretty excited about. Uh, again, there's always risk when using new software like this. So, you know, heed that warning. But this is definitely the next step in the evolution of this technology. And I'm super excited to talk about it in this video today. So I hope you like this video. As always, smash that like button down below. Subscribe to this channel. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Are you excited about something like this? Have you tried these on-chain privacy solutions? And if you're as fascinated with this technology as I am, and you would take advantage of all the insane opportunity that's happening in blockchain right now, I can share how to become a blockchain master step-by-step -step, start to finish, how to increase your income by becoming a blockchain developer over at adaptiverse.com forward slash bootcamp. You really don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dappy Diversity.